Every essay, if it's following standard form, will have an introduction. In this tutorial, we'll look at what should and shouldn't go into the introductory section of an argumentative essay. To write a good introduction, you need to know what functions an introduction is supposed to serve. An introduction has several distinct functions, but they all come down to making life easier for readers. First, an introduction needs to tell the reader what the general subject matter of the essay is, what the issue is that you'll be discussing in the essay. Second, unless the issue is well known to everyone in your audience, you might also need to provide additional background information to help explain and set up the issue. How much background will depend on the issue and what you can assume about your intended audience. The key is that when you do finally state your main thesis, the reader has a good idea of what you're saying and what the issue is about. That gets us to the third function, to state your main thesis. By main thesis, all we mean is the conclusion of the overall argument of the essay, what you're trying to argue for. One of the most common problems with student essays is a failure to be clear about what the main thesis of the essay is. This needs to be stated as clearly as possible in the introduction, before you get into the main body. Finally, if your argument has any kind of complexity to it at all, then it can be very helpful to let the reader know what to expect in the remainder of the essay, how it's going to be structured and organized. You can think of it as providing a roadmap or plan or outline of how the argument is going to proceed. For smaller, simpler essays, these roadmaps may not be vital, but they become more and more important for both the reader and the essay writer as an essay becomes longer and more complicated. Something to watch out for if you're going to give a roadmap of this kind is to make sure that you actually do in the essay what you said you would do in the introduction. The introduction sets up expectations for the reader, and you want to do your best to fulfill those expectations. That's what goes into the introductory section of an argumentative essay. It's also important to remember that what doesn't go in. Another common mistake that students make with introductions is to begin describing arguments or providing other kinds of information that really belong in the main body of the essay. The introduction is for setting up the main argument, providing background and context so the reader is prepared to understand and follow the arguments in the main body. But that's it. Once you start giving premises and considering objections that pertain to the main thesis of your essay, you're not introducing your essay anymore. One last point. In essay writing guides, people will often refer to the introductory paragraph of the essay. It's true that sometimes you can state what you need to state in one paragraph, especially if the essay is short and simple, but more often you'll need more than one paragraph to introduce the issue, state your thesis, and sketch the outline for the essay. So it's more accurate and more helpful to talk about the introductory section of an essay, where it's understood that this introductory section can include more than one paragraph. Okay, let's look at an example. Here is the introductory paragraph of a student essay on the ethics of fighting in hockey. Rather than me read this, I'm going to recommend that you pause the video here and read it for yourself, and then ask yourself what you think it does right and what it does wrong as an introduction. Then restart the video when you're done. Okay, the first thing to say is, yes, there are some style and sentence structure issues that could be improved. But it's important to distinguish issues of style from issues of function. So for now, let's ignore the style issues. In terms of function, what does this introduction do right? Does it clearly introduce the issue? Is there a clear thesis statement? Does it tell the reader what to expect in the remainder of the essay? This introduction actually does a pretty good job on all three counts. It's clear that the issue is about the ethics of fighting in hockey. Mind you, there's still some room for clarification. Someone might read this and wonder whether the issue is about whether fighting in hockey should be banned or whether it's about fighting in hockey as a general moral issue. These two aren't necessarily the same thing. I might judge an action or a practice to be morally wrong, but not necessarily agree that the practice should be banned. And it's also unclear whether this is about professional hockey or whether it's meant to include amateur hockey, and if so, what age range of players is being considered. So there's room for improvement in clarifying precisely what the issue is but it's still not too bad. Now, does this introduction have a clear thesis statement? Yes, it does. The writer makes it clear in a couple of places what side he's going to come down on in this debate. But the clearest place is right here in the yellow highlighted sentence. In this essay, I will argue that fighting should be allowed in hockey. There are lingering questions about what precisely this means, but there's no ambiguity about what side of the issue the writer is on. 
Now, does the writer give us an idea of what to expect in the rest of the essay? Yes, she does, especially in the last sentence. Some people object that fighting in hockey sends the message to children that violence is acceptable, but I will argue that fighting actually prevents more injuries than it causes. This tells us something about the argumentative structure of the essay. We know that the writer is going to consider an objection and present a reply to the objection, and we're told what issues the objection and the reply are going to address. Does an introduction need this kind of outlining? For a shorter essay like this, maybe not. This is partly a matter of preference. But you'll never go wrong by adding some discussion of how the argument is going to proceed. It's a good habit to pick up. So this introduction gets a few important things right. Does it do anything wrong? Well, if I were editing this, I'd recommend that the writer rethink that second sentence. This sentence tells us a lot about how the argument of the essay is going to go. I think it tells us too much. It's actually giving an argument for the main conclusion. And that's not what an introduction is for. This belongs in the main body of the essay. In an introduction, you can talk about the, the argumentative issues that your essay is going to address, but you want to reserve the presentation of those arguments for the main body. The reason for this is simply to avoid confusing the reader. You don't want to start arguing for one side of an issue before you've finished explaining what the issue is. So if I were to summarize my editorial comments on this introduction, the key suggestions would be to move this argumentative bit to the main body and to spend a little more time clarifying the issue. Is the claim just that fighting in hockey shouldn't be banned or that fighting is actually a good thing, a desirable feature of the game? Is it about fighting only at the higher levels of amateur and professional hockey or at all levels? And so on. I'm not going to bother rewriting this introduction here. The example is meant simply to illustrate the thought process that goes into writing introductions. The main idea is to think about the functions that an introduction is supposed to serve and to make sure that your introduction fulfills those functions.